Right now, at this time every week, we're going to welcome in Kevin Minnick of NJ Advanced Media. Check out all his stuff on NJ.com. Good morning, Kev. Hey, good morning, Sully. What's happening, man? Getting ready for championship Saturday. Yeah, you, uh, you're taking you, no, no day off this weekend to uh, to do the yard cleanup, so you gotta, you're going to have to wait a week or two on that. No, we got a week. Uh, I don't know. I don't know when we're going to get around to that. We got a lot of stuff that still needs to be cleaned up, but uh, you know, no big deal. It can it can wait. So what's going on uh, today? I guess uh, a bunch of the boys' games, as well as some of the non-public girls, right? Today we got non-publics. No no public schools today. Oh, all non-publics. Okay. So we got uh, Camden Catholic will play Bergen Catholic at two o'clock for the non-public A title in boys, and then. Uh, at 7 o'clock, we have the top two teams in the state with Roselle Catholic and Ranny playing for the non-public B title in a rematch from last season's game. So wow. it's good. It should be that, a, that's uh, a heavyweight matchup right there, buddy. Yeah, it should be a highly entertaining, uh, you know, highly entertaining day today. Now, do you think that game will be a pretty high-scoring game between uh, Ranny and Roselle? I mean, I haven't seen either one of those play, teams play this year, but I know they, they obviously have great players and uh, – what, what, how do you think that game will play out? You know, I, I think it's probably a game where a lot of people would say, oh, yeah, they're, you know, they're going to score a ton of points. But I think it'll probably be in the 60s. Um, you know, I saw Rowney play Wildwood Catholic. And, uh, you know, Wildwood Catholic gave Rowney uh, a game that um, a lot of people probably didn't think was going to happen. And, um, you know, pushed Rowney to the brink, ended up going into overtime, and, you know, Rowney pulls it out. But, uh, you know, uh, they're, they're, they're clearly two teams that have some incredibly uh, talented players. And, you know, they're very familiar with each other. And, and it's going uh, to be a good one. I think, uh, you know, a, a big factor in the game will be if Roselle Catholic, if uh, Josh uh, Pierre-Louis, their, uh, their guard headed to UNLV, is able to play because he hurt his wrist in Wednesday's uh, sectional final. So, you know, they may not be at 100%, which would obviously give uh, – you know, give Rowney a little bit more of a of an of an advantage, I think. But uh, you know, I think uh, it's going to be uh, high scoring. I think you know, like I said, in the '60s, I think you're going to see a handful of dunks here and there. I mean, both teams like to to get up and down the floor and show their athleticism. So, uh, you know, it's obviously going to be a, a great game to cap off or to uh, actually wrap off uh, wrap up today's today's four games up in Tom's River. Now, Kevin, were you at the uh, the Haddonfield Candy game earlier this week? I was at the Haddonfield Camden game, yeah. Like you know, in, take, and, take us through you know, that because I, I was out cover, out covering another game and and I was trying to keep tabs on it and, and I saw Haddonfield was down. I think what around eleven with two minutes to go. Yeah, Haddonfield was down eleven, just under two minutes to go in the game, and uh, you know you kind of thought at that point, you know, does Haddonfield, you know, ha- have another run and left in it? And and I even thought that going into the fourth quarter because they were down, um, I believe it was fourteen points. So, you know, Camden had played really well and had really executed to that point and had done some nice things. And, you know, had the field had – they hit a little bit of a lull or the shots just weren't dropping. And then, you know, they, they, they hung around, they hung around. And if you keep – you know, had the field hadn't been in that position pretty much all season long. Um, they got themselves down by, by 20-some points, I think it was, against West Deptford towards the end of the regular season and worked their way back and won that game. But, you know, on a game where the, the stage was as big as it was and the, fa- and the, and the, the you know, the, uh, the factors into it were huge and, and the ultimate result was, was a sectional title, you know, that all adds up to a tremendous amount of pressure. And Haddonfield did not break and they, they worked their way back and Dan Fleming was absolutely phenomenal in that fourth quarter for them. I believe he scored, um, 12 points in the fourth quarter um, and just willed them back into the game. And, you know, uh, there were a couple spots where Camden made a couple mistakes. Haddonfield took advantage of the situation. And then, you know, all of a sudden you're looking at the scoreboard. Well, it's now it's a three possession game. Now it's a two possession game. Um, you know, they, they've got themselves back in the spot. They can tie it up. So, you know, they uh, Haddonfield really showed what it's all about. And the thing was, they had never really, like I said, had never really been in that situation all season long. But, you know, those kids have played in huge games. Um, Haddonfield's got Division One athletes, not necessarily basketball players, but big-time athletes on that team. And, like I said, they've been in the big games. They've been on the big stage. The moment was not too big for them. 
and obviously, you know, down the stretch they delivered, and you know they knock off Camden in in overtime. So it was. Uh, I think the game was it lived up to the hype. Um, you know, I saw a Camden team that gave all it had and brought out the best in Haddonfield. That's what Paul Wiedemann had said after the game. So, you know, uh, Haddonfield moves on. They they win their state semifinal over Mattisquan, and now they're going to play for the state championship tomorrow. So, you know, uh, I give them. Uh, you know, I have. To, I think they can win the game tomorrow, and and you know, become a uh, you know a repeat champion. Kevin, uh, what was the atmosphere like going into overtime of that game? I mean, that's such a difficult thing when you blow a lead like that, and then to come back in overtime and try to win it. So, you know, for the team that's that has come back, you have so much momentum going into that overtime period. You're you're all filled with confidence, and and so it was really a tough situation for Camden to be in. Yeah, you know, I think uh, you know. Uh, Obviously, you know a lot of air came out of the bubble and out of the balloon, and they were they were a little uh, down. But you know they they battled in the in the overtime, and it ended up being a two point game. And, and they had an opportunity at the at the end to to win it, and they got a good look, and it just didn't fall for them. So, you know, uh, after the game, though, it's a you know it's a you look back on all the different things you could have done, and that's just the natural reaction of things. And you know they were you know. Uh, like any team would be in that situation, regardless of who they are, they were extremely disappointed and, uh, you know, and upset by, by what had transpired because they, they, they had it, they were that close and they just, you know, they just, just they, they just needed one more basket, just one more turnover, just something, one, one more thing to kind of help close that game out. And it didn't happen for them. So, you know, the, the place was, you know, all game long, the place was, uh, was, was nuts, so to speak. I mean, it was sold out, you know, the, the gym was packed and, you know, it was, it, it, it was a game that, you know, we'd love to see those two teams play each other more than just once. And, and ultimately it'd be for, you know, you know, for the biggest, biggest prize. But, um, they, uh, you know, Haddonfield worked its way back, showed what it's made of, and like I said, Camden gave them all they could, and, you know, this particular time just didn't just didn't have that one more thing that they needed to get over the top. Talk with Kevin Minnick of NJ Advanced Media. Check out all his stuff on NJ.com if you're just joining us. Talking some high school basketball, and Kevin, um, I've been high on this Camden Catholic team all season. Uh, you know, I know they had a good team last year, and, and they played uh, pretty well down at the Seagull Classic. I wasn't exactly convinced that they could make this kind of run to a state championship, but man, they've been playing so well the last you know four or five weeks. Yeah, they've won sixteen in a row, and uh, you know, like I said, going into the game with with Paul the Six for the for the yeah, sectional final last week, I really thought Paul the Six was the team to beat, and Camden Catholic came out and executed. Um, you know, Paul the Six threw a lot of, a lot at him in the fourth quarter of that game, and Camden Catholic answered every time. Um, you know, they're going to have a, a tough test today against Bergen Catholic. Bergen Catholic features a couple of big guys. One, Zach Fremantle heading to Xavier. Um, another one, I believe, is Matt Zona, another big kid, about six, 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 seven, somewhere in that neighborhood. Um, and they have a, a point guard who's a tremendous defender. On the flip side, I think Camden Catholic, not – I haven't seen Bergen Catholic, but I, I kind of have to think that maybe – the matchups are going to be okay, and that Camden Catholic is 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 as a good a pick to win this game as Bergen is. Um, you know, I'm leaning towards Bergen. I think they've probably played a little bit more of a tougher schedule. Um, you know, playing in where they do, and and uh, we have them at number four in the state right now. Camden Catholic at number twelve, but Camden Catholic brings its big guys in Uchioka Four and Baba Ajiki. They bring their their steady point guard who makes things go in Patrick Corbett. And what they have is an X factor, I think, in this game is going to be uh, Zach Hicks, a sophomore swingman. He's about 6'5", six, 6'6", six, six himself, but he's only a sophomore. But he's, he has really kind of played extremely well in his role on this team. And, uh, you know, I think he could be the difference in this game if he can knock down a couple of threes, get to the basket a little bit, and especially, you know, help play, you know, play that tremendous defense that Camden Catholic has played, you know, I think they can be in it. They, they, they can't afford to get behind by too much. Um, they can't afford to, to let the uh, emotions maybe play into it, the momentum of the game. I think, I don't think that's going to happen, but just something to look out for. 
Um, you know, the, the moment is not going to be too big for these kids today because they've pretty much all been there. They've all played in this game last year. They all, you know, took that road last year. And this year they've, you know, kind of picked right up where they left off and, and have played extremely well all season long. So, you know, I give them uh, every opportunity in the world to win today because I think, I think the matchups are going to be okay. It's just a matter of, you know, maybe who – who gets to the line a little bit more, maybe who, who gets that key rebound here and there, you know, to, to stop a, a potential, uh, you know, run. So it's going to be, it's going to be interesting. And that game will be at two o'clock. And, uh, you know, I expect, like I, like I said before, I expected this one to be a, a really, really good basketball game because Sully this weekend, you know, today and tomorrow we're done with the, we're done with the wannabes. These are, these are the best teams in their respective groups so we expect, you know, expect the basketball to be played pretty much at a high level. Yeah, this is a great weekend of basketball. And uh, another game I'll, I'm really interested to see how it plays out. Uh, I, won't, I won't be up there, obviously, uh, Sunday at Rutgers at 5 p.m. But um, Group 3, you have Ramapo against Morristown. I saw Morristown in the uh, the Group 3 uh, South Jersey final against Mainland. And, man, this is a good team. They Every one of them can shoot the ball. Uh, they have some really good guards. And uh, some big guys they can run off the bench. I mean, r- really fun team to watch. They they like to to push the tempo up a little bit. And what was just too much for for Mainland to handle. I mean, Mainland had a great season, but there was just too many matchup problems in that game. So uh, Morristown twenty six and five going up against number nineteen Ramapo twenty six and three. Uh, this should be a great matchup. Yeah, the thing with Ramapo that a lot of people you know down in the South Jersey area probably don't know unless they've read about it is. They're going to bring a six a six eleven kid onto the floor and Neil Quinn oh. who could be the who, 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 yeah exactly six who eleven be who could be the difference in the game. Obviously, Morristown has not faced someone uh, with that kind of size, um, you know. But you know what? Worse things have happened. Greater things have happened. Morristown comes to the floor as a team you know, riding tremendous confidence. Um, you know, Akil Geary comes off the bench as a six man in the semifinal the other night against wall. He drains five, three pointers. He ends quarters on corner three pointers that just, just deflates teams and just continues to create momentum for, for Morristown. You know, they, they got Nick Cartwright Atkins, who is vastly underrated in my opinion. The kid's only about six, two, but he gets to the basket. He rebounds. He plays tremendous defense. And he's not – he could be the superstar on a lot of teams, but he does not have that ego factor. He does not he, – he's he loves his teammates, and, and they play as a, as a unit. And, you know, I wrote about this in, in the state semifinal. You know, when you get to this type of basketball, you can't have – one or two guys be the basketball team and carry the team. You need to have a team. You need that. That goes right down to the the sixth, the seventh, the eighth kid in the rotation. They need to be able to step on the floor and your team not miss a beat. And that's the way it is with Morristown. Whoever he plugs, you know, Sean Antsy plugs into those games. They play their role and they play it. They, they played it extremely well. They're not a big team. You know, their their, their top kid may be six four if he's six four. So they're going to have to execute they're going to have to play another you know team basketball like they have all season i don't expect them not to but that's going to be a key to them and you know ramapo's been a top 20 team all season long so they're going to it's, it's going to be a, a it's going to clearly be their toughest game of the season i think you know morristown played an extremely difficult schedule they played much like wildwood catholic they played showcase events every weekend so they're ready for this moment you know they are prepared you know, I'm just wondering if it's going to just be uh, uh, just the fact that maybe Ramapo is just going to be a little bit better than them. Um, but, you know, like I said, you ride this momentum, you're playing well, you do what you've done all season to get here, you don't change things up now, and, you know, 32 minutes is, is – you know, both teams got to play for 32 minutes, you know, so we'll see what happens. If, if Morristown plays for 32 and Ramapo plays for 31 – Maybe Morristown gets itself a state championship, so we'll see what happens. But uh, yeah, they're 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 a very very good basketball team. Yeah, Kevin, the coolest thing about this game is going to be whoever wins it. The celebration is going to be insane. I mean, Ramapo's never won a state championship. Last time Morristown won was nineteen fifty nine. So two programs that are star for a state title, and it's going to be pandemonium. Whoever wins this game. Yeah, you know it, it's 
it's like that across the board. And, and in most cases, you know, the non-publics are a little bit different. But as far as public schools are concerned, if you were to go back through the history, you know, winning state championships for isn't it, it's not something you can just go to the store, you know, pay a dollar and, and walk out and, and, and you have it. You know, it's not like buying a pretzel. If you want one today, you get one today. If you want one tomorrow, okay, you can have one tomorrow. They are few and far between for most schools. A high percentage of schools, you know, you look at the teams that it's, – it's Morristown, 1960 was the last time they played in one. Ramapo's never been there. you got other teams, you know, who have been there a few times have come up empty. you got other teams who are just basking in the moment because, you know, this is their year. So it's something that you can't take for granted because you may never get back there again. So – I think everybody that, you know, those, those eight teams tomorrow that step on the floor at Rutgers for the public schools, some of them have been there before. Obviously, Haddonfield is one of them. Um, but, you know, some of those teams, they've been there before, but it's been a long time. So they're going to they're gonna cherish that opportunity, and they're going to they're gonna leave everything they have on the floor because, A, for, for the seniors, they're not coming back. And, B, for others, they may not come back. So, you know, it, it's 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 something special, and 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 I think you know, you go into the game knowing that, and you give everything you have, you give everything on the floor, win or lose. You know, you can't be disappointed. Obviously, you're going to be a little disappointed if you come out with a loss because of, you know, the path it took to get there. But when you look back on it, you give everything you have, and you can't do anything more than that. So it's a you know, it's it's a great opportunity, and uh, you know, like I said, those eight teams are going to give out give everything they have. Great stuff, as always, Kev. We appreciate it. Up against the break, I'll let you go, but uh, enjoy the rest of the weekend. I know you got a lot of work to do uh, today and tomorrow, uh, so we'll catch up with you next week and, and see how this all plays out. All right, we're on our way. Road trip number four. <laughs> we, got, we got road trip number four today. We're heading to Tom's River. All right, man. Gas up the car and, and get your power bars ready. We're set to go. Thanks again. Thanks again. Great stuff, Kev. Appreciate it, bud.